Hi there, my name is Caitlin Bandy and this is my channel Bandy's Books and today I'm here with a Tag Tuesday video. Man, it has been a minute since I have done a book tag. I have not really had the time to shoot tag videos in quite a while. Um, I've been so busy with work and things that were going on that I really had to prioritize the videos like my wrap ups and my book of the month predictions. And so the videos like tags have kind of fallen off on the side. And meanwhile, I've been tagged in a whole bunch of them. So I'm gonna tackle them by going through all of the tags I have recently been tagged in one by one. I'm gonna go in the order that I was tagged in. And the oldest one I was tagged in was the this or that tag. This was originally created by Bookends and Books for People April. I know we are no longer in April. I know that that readathon is over, um, but I thought that the questions were super interesting in this tag, so I wanted to go ahead and do it anyways. I was tagged by Alan at Big Hard Books and Classics, and his tag was a lot of fun to watch. Um, this is, again, a really interesting set of questions, so if you find what I have to say interesting, you should go check out some of the other videos in this tag. Prompt number one, big, fat, and detailed biographies or short and succinct biographies. You know what? Give me the big, thick biographies. I don't usually go for like the big, thick books. Like in terms of fiction, I tend to like between 300 to 500 pages. But for biographies, I want to know everything. I want to feel like an expert on the subject of the biography by the time that I'm done reading it. I don't want to read like enough to be interested and then have to go do a ton more research. Number two, celebrity memoirs or average Joe memoirs. Probably both. Uh, I think that celebrity memoirs can be really interesting depending on the celebrity though. Like I don't necessarily wanna read a memoir of every single celebrity out there, but there have definitely been ones that stand out to me. Matthew McConaughey's uh, memoir was really good. Will Smith's memoir was really good. I know that a lot of people are raving over Viola Davis's memoir, which I haven't had a chance to read yet. Um, Trevor Noah's memoir is like probably my all time favorite memoir. Generally speaking, there are some celebrities that put out really, really interesting memoirs. Oh, Jeanette McCurdy, she's another one. Her memoir was heartbreaking, but also really interesting. But I also like average Joe memoirs. Sometimes I wanna hear about real people and the real shit they're going through. Um, and it especially depends on the subject that they're writing about. Sometimes when you know you have somebody who experienced addiction or mental health or has overcome some like extreme obstacle, I think it is inspiring. And so I think there's a lot of value in reading those average Joe memoirs. Number three, complete correspondence or selected letters. I guess it depends on the scenario. I don't think I've actually really read too many books with a lot of like correspondence in it. Uh, but I will tell a little bit of a story that has to do with this sort of tangentially. So my grandmother, my dad's mother had Parkinson's disease and we were dealing with um, her having instability and dementia and things. And so we had hired a nurse to live in with her so that she could stay at home for her final years. And before the nurse could come live with her, we had to get her house in order. So while I was getting the house in order and cleaning things and, and working on, you know, getting the house into livable condition for this person to come live in, I found a bag in my grandmother's dresser and it was all of these letters from World War II. So my grandfather was in World War II. He was in the Navy and he was in the Pacific. And it was every single letter that he ever sent her throughout the war. Um, there were letters talking about my dad's birth and his older brother's birth and how much he loved his family and his children. And my grandfather dealt with really severe post-traumatic stress. Um, he was sunk on multiple ships and had some really horrific experiences during the war. So the man that came back from the war was not the same person that was writing those letters. And so my father and his brothers never really got to know their dad that way. And um, so I found these letters and I sat one day and read them. My grandmother was in like a rehabilitation facility. She had fallen and broken her hip. And so she was there for like a while, you know, re regaining her mobility, learning to use a walker, all that kind of stuff. And so I had time to read all of these letters and my grandfather died before I was born. So I never had a chance to know him. So it was like getting to know him and seeing this whole collection of letters. It was something that was for me really moving and poignant. Um, it felt like a piece of missing family history. Sadly, my grandmother decided to shred those letters eventually um, when she came home and she knew a nurse was coming to live with her. I think that for her, they were very private and intimate. And so um, she maybe didn't want strangers to be reading them. And so she shredded every single one of them. And that is one of those things that like to this day, I regret. I wish I had stopped her from doing it, but I also didn't want to embarrass her and let her know that I had read them. Um, and so because of that experience, I guess I really value collections of letters and value like having the whole complete collection. Um, I think there's something really poignant in seeing you know, all the thoughts and words that a person has over a long period of time. I do think that sometimes books use like one or two letters here and there strategically, and that can be very effective as well. 
but um, there's something special about getting to see an entire collection of letters. Question four, memoirs that were written when the memories are fresh or memoirs that were written in hindsight? Well, I would argue that all memoirs are written in hindsight because you have to get through the event to write the memoir. Um, but I don't know, I guess I don't really pull people on their memoirs to know how fresh the memories were when they wrote them. Um, a book that I recently read was While You Were Out by Meg Kissinger. And this is one that was written in hindsight. It's reflecting on her whole entire life and her family's entire life. And so obviously she couldn't write all of this when the memories were fresh, but I would argue that the things that she's writing about were so traumatic and significant that those memories stay fresh. They don't really go away. I suppose overall, I'm a bit ambivalent about this question. However, I guess if like pressed for an answer, I would say that maybe hindsight is beneficial because that implies that you're further away from whatever this big event was and you've had time to process whatever you had to process, time to think about it, time to deal with any trauma that it brings up. And I think sometimes that provides for meaningful reflections. Um, so I guess if pressed hindsight. Question five, gossipy biographies or scholarly biographies? Scholarly all the way. I'm not really interested in gossip and anecdote. I want things that are based in reality. I want objective opinions of things. I don't want the author's voice to like be bleeding through really heavily. Um, and for me, like gossip implies nastiness. So I don't really want any part of that. Number six, diaries of ordinary life or diaries of extraordinary events. I'm gonna say both. I have read some really moving and meaningful diaries of ordinary day to day. And I have also read some really moving and meaningful diaries of extraordinary things. Um, I think both have values in different ways. I think both can be valuable in different ways. Number seven, arty memoirs or sporting memoirs? Again, both. Um, I really like art, but I also really like sports. Um, I was an athlete most of my life, so I appreciate what it takes to be an athlete, but I'm also a chef and I, I like to paint and I like to write. And I'm kind of a creative person, so I relate to that as well. Gritty autobiographical writing or inspiring autobiographical writing. So I don't know that those two things are mutually exclusive. I actually feel like gritty and inspiring go hand in hand. Usually if like you have to grit it out and get through something, it implies you're dealing with something difficult and typically overcoming difficult things is inspiring. Um, so for me, I feel like those are hand in hand. I think that's kind of one and the same, but I guess if I had to choose grittiness or inspiring, I don't know. I guess I really appreciate gritty. I like the stories of adversity. I love seeing people overcome things that they never expected, that like that struggle, that hustle. Um, I really appreciate that aspect, but I also love to be inspired too, so. Question number nine, biographies of historical figures or biographies of contemporary figures? So this is another one where I feel like I wanna say both because I really do appreciate both. If by contemporary they mean like the last 100 years, then that's what I would pick um, because there has just been so much that's happened. The human species has developed so much technology, medicine, there has been all of these political situations, all these wars, all of this stuff that's like significantly changed society and made it what it is today. And so I think there's a lot of really interesting contemporary figures to read about. Um, I really find myself never getting tired. Number 10, memoirs of happy days or memoirs of tragic days. So finally one where I have a concrete answer. I prefer the tragic ones. Honestly, um, I, again, really appreciate books that talk about adversity, talk about difficult subjects. I want deep themes. I want something that's gonna make me feel deeply. I want something that's gonna make me stop and really think. And for me, I find that books that are more focused on sad elements or more tragic elements tend to do that for me more than things that are like overwhelmingly happy. It's so not to say that I just want like sad and only sad, um, you know, usually like when you're reading something that's more tragic or sad, there is like a point where it rises back up. And so for me, that's kind of how that works best. But definitely I have a preference for sadder emotions in writing. And that goes for like nonfiction and fiction. And then there's a bonus prompt that is about the complete diary of Samuel Pepys, but I do not know who that is. And I'm not familiar with that book. So I'm not even gonna try to answer this question. Um, if you're wondering why I've skipped the bonus question, that is why. So that is the end of the this or that tag. Again, this was made for people April, which I am bummed to have missed this tag when it was going on. But again, I thought these questions were really interesting. I thought the prompt was really well considered. And so I wanted to go ahead and answer it anyways. I hope that you found it interesting. If you did hit the thumbs up, comment down below and let me know how you feel about autobiographies, memoirs and biographies. Do you have a preference for which type you read? 
Um, do you prefer celebrities or average Joes? Do you like happy, sad? You know, tell me all the things. And if you have a memoir or autobiography or biography that you've really enjoyed, drop it in the comments below as well because I'm always looking for recommendations. One of my goals for 2024 was to increase the amount of nonfiction reading that I was reading. So I'm taking all the nonfiction recs. And if you're not already subscribed to this channel, you know what to do, hit that subscribe button down below as well as the notification bell so that you never miss a video. And that way we can see each other again soon. Thanks so much for joining, bye.